How are you? You're on mute. <laughs> it, no, I can't really see. I mean, I'm only seeing. Um, okay, now I see it. I'm okay. I'm at school. Oh my God. Yeah. Go home, girl. Go home. Well, you know what? I don't have, I have no idea what to expect from this. Uh -huh. So like my friends are like, you are totally overprepared. I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm not prepared enough. You know, <laughs> they're like you're freaking out. I'm like, I am. <laughs> when you're I said over, you're me, overthinking it. <laughs> I know, but it's so hard because I got uh, my, my, um, the film guy in our, he put lighting in here for me because I was like, everything is a glare on the camera. So, and I'm working close, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, it's tiny it's small so i want everyone to be able to see and i don't know who knows what you know right, right. well plus, like, sometimes I, people I come up. to work and sometimes people come to just hang out and and kibitz you know and talk oh good you're gonna yeah. lead all that right i'm not good at that you'll lead all the chatting right well yeah i mean i'll do the intro and then okay. um I will introduce you and then you'll take it from there and I will let you know if I see questions in the in the chat that you okay. can see while you're multitasking and look gotcha. everybody here is here because we are all in the same in the same situation and we're all helping each other out so yeah don't stress it don't stress okay. it Cause like I was think, saying to my friend, I'm, I was like, what was I th like? I just said yes. And then I never thought about, it. I don't like being on zoom. Like I apps and I hate my hands. Like I hate my hands. So I'm like, everybody else has really nice hands and I have horrible ones. You know? So I said, to her, I was like, she goes, well, why'd you say yes? I'm like, I don't know. I didn't even think about it. And then I didn't want to back out of it, you know, but I like doing in-person things. Like I'm totally okay with that. But do you remember when you had to teach at home on zoom? Did you, yeah. did you have to do that? Yeah, of course. It was, a, it was a nightmare, don't you think? But, but this is not that. You're not dealing <laughs> with, with kids who don't want to be here and aren't doing anything. <laughs> Everybody who comes wants to hang out and be with kindred spirit. It's all good. Good. Okay. That's good to know. I, I think Kristen said she was coming. Oh, that's good. Yeah. How many people... Uh... I, I'm not even going to ask how many people signed up. I don't want to know. There how were many? there were 30 registered, but usually it's really small. It's like 10 to 15 because, you know, <laughs> everybody wants to be here, but then life. Yes. yes. And yes. family and dinner and kids and whatever. Mm -hmm. So yes. you know, it's that's why we record it. And that's why, you know, people can come back and watch when they couldn't be here in person. Right. So, yeah. It's a very good thing you're doing and we'll, we're all going to help each other out. Don't worry about okay. it. Okay. All right. I just don't know what people know. So I'm, I'm really basically starting from this, from scratch. I'm just going to, I have a little, like to remind me where to go. I okay. have board one. <laughs> like, <laughs> I already like, I don't know how you tie up your, your thing, but. Yeah, that's that's what I, I like the odd. Um, I like your what did where is it? Is that driftwood? No, I believe it or not, I went on Facebook Marketplace and this guy was selling twenty five pounds of um remnant wood from his workshop. Mm -hmm. Nice. And I bought one box, and this is like this is big. Most of them yeah. are the size, right? Um, and I was so impressed with his stuff that I bought four boxes, four more boxes. Wow. Because not only would I like to do this with the kids in class, I fell in love with this one because it's all raw and stuff. I love, yeah. Um, and I love that, you know, I followed the the thing. The yeah, other. that's what, yeah, that's what I was going to say to people. Like, that's what I do. Like I had that, I have, I'm going to show everybody like what I have, like that I've started. Cause I start, I have a lot of UFOs, unfinished objects. So I start... <laughs> <laughs> you're hilarious <laughs> anyway, so I, have a, I can't if wait if you are an artist in the world you have a lot of unfinished objects art, yes objects yes yes it's just the, the way of the world yes and there's always something waiting for me yeah to keep me company and do things so yes I do I, I worked it that way um so when I work when I uh, work really close, like tight, like quarter inch. Right. So then you get a double, you have a, like a double string. It's hard to say with the lighting, but you have a double string. Oh, okay. 
and then you you treat the double as one as one war oh you do okay yeah yeah well i, I do sure that's how why to do other that. people do but i said i wasn't sure how to do that so that's yeah good. But I'm going to show you because I don't have one that's uh, warped the way you have it. I have that's what I'm going to be doing now. I'm going to be warping it that way, uh -huh. um, and I and I don't normally do it that way all the time because um, I'm I just did everything much bigger than I work because when I was looking at the camera, I was like, oh, no one's going to see this, and my hands are getting in the way. Not that I not because I hate my hands, but because they were getting in the way. My fingers. Uh -huh. right. So I was like, you know what? Let's make this a little bit bigger. So hopefully it works and you'll let me know. If, I'm going to keep an eye on what people can see. Andrew's our film guy. And I was like, I can't stand this. It's mirroring. He goes, oh, here, just do this. Boom, boom, boom. And I'm like, okay, good. <laughs> do you want to try connecting the camera and making sure? Camera is connected. Let me, um, let me show you. To your hands or like, yeah, how do you switch look, off? here we go. This is it. It's coming. There's my hand. So oh, like it, okay. it goes in and out of focus. So like th that's why I, I went big because um, it's hard to see. And even when you go closer, you know, that's one end of the, because I already, I already hammered those in. I'm just going to show people how to hammer real quick, okay. but I have another board that I'm going to warp and show everybody how to warp it. Okay. So, yeah. So and actually then when you're stick. doing that, when, when we start, I'm going yeah. to spotlight you and make you co-host in case, you know, whatever reason. Um, so you'll be the biggest picture on the screen. Okay. Okay. Right. Which um, makes sense. Right. I'm going to, I'm going to switch back to the interview because like when you introduce me, I want to just give a bit of, can I just tell them who I am? Is that okay? Yes, a little bit of background and. Just talk about inspiration and how I started doing this. Of course. Yeah. And Roberta's here. Mom has been trying to connect. Yeah. So Thanksgiving looked like fun. You have some nice fat, thick yarn. I've got this stuff here, but like I said, it's hard to see with the lighting, you know? So I'm in my classroom, so it's the best I got. I have, look at this. I have a pile. <laughs> mm-hmm. I even pulled out some leather strips and I have two bins here. Yeah. I say. Like I didn't know what I was going to be in the mood for, like what colors and stuff. I'm uh, actually literally not, I'm not doing any kind of color scheme. I'm just doing colors so that people can say what I'm doing. Well, that works too. Yeah. And um, I'm only. Hello. Mother. Hello. Hi, Roberta. I, we, Hi. We can't, we can't see Hi. you. I don't know why. Wait, I'm trying to figure it out. <laughs> because it's always the same problem. You don't hit the right button. I know. I'm looking at the buttons I see here. I don't see that many. Eventually, I guess I'll get there. Okay. So then all the tech works fine. And you just have to, you have a drink with you maybe, Pat, to could just calm <laughs> On the nerves. <laughs> I said, I said to myself, I should do a shot of tequila or something. You know, no, I have, a, I have some. <laughs> there you go. Hello. Yeah, I, oh, I don't have a shot of tequila. Being that I'm at school and all. Wow. Yeah. Maybe you could have raided the dean's closet for whatever he confiscated. <laughs> Not at our school. No. <laughs> uh. <sighs> I can't wait till tomorrow. I can't wait till 8.35. Why? Because <laughs> this is supposed to be over at 8.30. <laughs> oh, tonight. Yeah, and then I can go home and have a, like a half a glass of wine and chill. <laughs> you're going to enjoy yourself. I know you're probably wired and nervous, but it's going to be fun. Yeah. It's going to be fun. And you're just showing the world something that you love. Yeah, true. That's all. I should blur out my back. I'm not going to blur out my background because that's one more thing I have to look at. Does well, it does it bother you to see my classroom behind me? Well, it's only it's only behind. There's only a shot. It's a counter. Doesn't bother me at all. Good. When mom tries to show us her work at, at you know during a a thing and it's all blurry, it makes me a little crazy. But I I can't. Yes, I'm in school, Roberta. What? Oh uh, yes, I am at school. What time? Is, where are you? Uh, I'm in New Rochelle, but um, I, I, my apartment's too small. 
Like I don't have like your like Steph, I was thinking about your space uh-huh. and it's just perfect because you have like your kitchen, you have the whole dining room. It's huge. Don't you have a studio also, like a bedroom? Yeah. Yeah. I don't because my daughter lives with me and she was supposed to move when we moved in, she was supposed to move out like months later. And so she's in the really big bedroom. And she goes, Mom, do you, I was like, wow, your bedroom is way bigger than mine. Meanwhile, I pay all the rent. And she goes, do you want to move in here? I said, well, you said you're moving out in a couple of months. So when you move out, I'll move all my art, everything art in, in the big room. And I'll keep this, the smaller bedroom for my bedroom. Mm-hmm. Well, oh, well, guess what? That relationship went by the wayside. So she never moved out. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. It won't be forever. She, she'll find a, a way, you know. Yeah, she will. I'm not worried. We get along like a house on fire. We're besties. So oh, that's great. Yeah. You ready, mother? Ready, yeah. Did you bang your nails? Did you do your homework? Ooh, how close are they? A quarter, quarter in. Close. Look how lined up in. little soldiers they are. Wow. Yeah, that's good. I'm good, I'm good with the hammer. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so hers are close together to warp. So she's just going to go da- back and forth. So I'll have to show I her. I her apart because it's a bigger piece. Yeah. So, yeah. I measured a quarter of an inch and I put little marks. So, yep. that's what you were supposed to do. Well done. I have another piece of wood, but I decided to go with this straight one. Look at this. Uh huh. Oh, nice. I was thinking if I did this one, I put like four nails at the top, five in the next row, six in the next row, and so on. I don't yeah. know if that would work. But that'll work. You'll have several weavings on one piece. Wait, why? Why would you? That doesn't make sense. You need a top and a bottom. Well. The top would keep getting lower, I guess. I don't know. It was a thought, but I didn't think it through. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> so that's why I did this one. Why but no, it- no, it will work because like I'm gonna be showing I'm gonna be showing this to everybody, but look at this piece of wood. I've warped oh, wow. it in it's three different layers, right? So I've warped it in, mul- in a multitude of different sections. Wow. So she- be doing all these weavings all the way around so she does it you know what i mean Uh uh-huh yeah but like you said though the the number of so if she's doing five uh four across and then the next section she needs to do four across and then the next section and she could change sections so she could do four and four and then another row of nails that would be five or six across and then below that so she needs a top and a bottom yes that should be the same but she could divide it up Right. Like this, like this piece here. This piece here, I would, um, I, I'm gonna do like straight across, and then it's gonna come narrow, so it'll end up coming to like one, so the weaving will get n- narrower and narrower. This is driftwood. Where do you find all this driftwood? I live in Ga- I lived in Garrison for 24 years, and I lived um, like right near the Hudson River. So there wow. was this place called Sandy Beach where like people go hiking across the street from there. But we would go. I go there and collect driftwood. So I have like a garage full of driftwood. Nice. But now it's in my store. Now actually, yes, it's a, it's in a garage now because I finally got another garage. So. <laughs> All right, I'm going to open the room to everybody. We have three people waiting. Okay. Um, I normally yeah. tell you to start somewhere like let people dribble in and like by 10 after seven, you can okay. get started. Sure. Meantime, we could schmooze. Okay. All right. Hello. Hey. Hi, buddy. Welcome, welcome. We're going to let people dribble in and uh, give it about seven to 10 minutes. So if you have any last minute stuff you want to go gather, collect, if you need a drink, <laughs> you could grab that too. I can use a drink. Yeah, I just got flavored water. 
I just want to let you know, I'm going to jump off of like just before eight o'clock. Just, I don't want, I don't want to be rude, but I have something planned then. No problem. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> and it'll be rec it's recording so you'll be able to catch up later on I'm feeling kind of bluesy in my color scheme like I'm not sure what direction I want to go in cool colors yeah like blues purple maybe a shot of brownish maroon mm. I'm not sure. I have this purple here that's on one of my weavings and it it doesn't even like right there it looks blue right that looks purple actually oh it does okay because yeah. it's really like it's more of a red purple and it keeps looking very blue in the cat on the camera mm. oh mom's doing hot pink you're feeling hot tonight <laughs> <laughs> hot you know really got to me the other day when you you criticized me for wearing so much black i didn't I, criticize you i just made a loud observation tj maxx the other day and i i bought a a velour um sweater jacket thing in an almost this hot a pink not quite Okay. Well, I'm wearing hot pink too, Roberta. That's what I have on. Pink, pink today. I was surprised to see you in a red shirt, and it looks good, Mom. It's also velour. Yes, I see that. So you can caress yourself and feel all kinds of fuzzy and nice. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I think the reason I got into wearing black was I thought I was too fat, and I wanted to hide it. Oh God. God. Someone else looks like they're at school. Sandra, she's at school. She's always at school. <laughs> she's getting in her, her last moments in the classroom as much as she can. <laughs> Sandra said she's uh she's being moved to a new a new space. Oh really? Oh really? Yep, oh, I'm feeling Got it. Got to pick my sinks today. Oh, Ooh. wow, how exciting. <laughs> I never got to pick furniture for my classroom. That's I'm jealous. I wish I could order new tables. They're all falling apart. Oh, Our tables are really big and heavy. They're like, they're eight feet by three feet. So we have them pushed together. So they're eight feet by six feet. And they weigh like, each of them weighs like, 300 pounds so ridiculous awesome. how many kids do you have in a class pat oh i don't have the numbers you guys have um this semester my largest class is like 22. how large are your classes um add 12. wow wow that's a lot yeah, I'm maxed out and sometimes one or two over because we're constantly getting new kids and then they have to shuffle people around to equalize the classes. And I'm at, I mean, on the roster, I'm at 34, 35. Live bodies in the room, you know, varies. How do you, like, do they all work intently or...? These are high school kids. You can't all work intently. Their brains don't work that way. Mm -hmm. um, there are many who are committed and love the class. And then there are some who just don't care where they are or what they're doing. Gotcha. You know, it is what it is. Steph, there's an echo. I don't know if anyone else hears it. Yeah, I hear it. I don't know whose it is. Oh, it's it's Sandra's fault. Okay. Okay. She's she muted herself. So feel free to unmute. We'll just deal with the echo. It's okay. Um, it's 706, maybe two more minutes, and then I guess we can get started. Hi, Christina and Laura, you are in stealth mode. Oh, right, Christina, there you are. You're leaving early and Laura's in stealth mode still. Okay, I like faces. Got the message to nail, but were we supposed to have it warped already as well? 
No, no. I'm going to show everybody like how to hammer in and then I'm going to go to the warping. So I'll show you how to do it. It's not really hard. Okay. Thank you. I, I, I just don't know how many people have actually weaved before. Super okay. simple. Yeah. And I don't, do any, I don't do anything very complicated. Perfect. Thank you. Is there hmm. one way to warp or is there a million ways to warp? There's just different ways to warp like I've seen online and stuff like, you know, and I've done it with middle school with a cardboard loom and stuff. So, uh, I mean, the way I warped the way you warped, okay. um, I haven't really seen that online. I just do it, you know. I mean, there, the little one that I did before, I kind of wrapped around the nail. But yes. this one, I just, I just, I mean, I wrapped around, like curled it a once and around and then went mm -hmm. one time. But this one, I just went like down and over and, and over yeah yeah but that's it. yeah you can do it that way i tend to do it the other way like what you were saying just because um i for myself i found that it keeps the the tension on the warp better okay that's that's only for me though sometimes then it create it, it, it all depends on how you work so i'm going to show both ways and then people can decide okay that sounds fair <clears throat> Um, can we use string for the warping? What, Mom? Can we use string for the warping? Yeah. Yes. As long as it's not too heavy. Stretchy. You don't, you don't want it heavy. How but, about the kind that you like bakery uh, string? This no. No. Well, you it's a kind. If you have if you have, well, if it's a big one, but Mom has a small one. If you oh, have yeah, like the true. pearl cotton thread that you would use, like, the, you the can... crochet thread yeah you can... cotton. well i have it but i don't know where it is right now well you aren't you should have come prepared <laughs> you could try warping it Let but it might see. be hold up, that, hold up the thread i can't see what kind is it or you don't even know it's it's uh, like what they have in the bakery to tie up the boxes. Well, that should work. Well, that's thin, yeah. That should work. Yeah. I mean, it's thinner than the yarn. It's got to be. Yeah, thin. it'll be fine. Yeah, that's fine. All right, I'm gonna um start. I'll just say good evening, everyone. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder if your schools are turning into circus town like mine is the closer we get to the holidays and the kids are getting all crazy. Um, yeah. Yeah. So then, of course, we're all extra super tired when we when we come home. Um, and I just pinned you, Pat. So Pat is. Okay. Um. So we had a lot of registrants and whoever can show up will show up and the rest will just watch later on in the video. And I'm happy to see those of you who did show up. And I'm happy to have Pat with us who um, I made friends with at the mm -hmm. NAEA conference 2021, right. no. Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah, it was 21. Yeah, 2021 yeah. in New York City. We sat next oh. to each other in a workshop and we were weaving. We were we were weaving and stitching and it was fun. And um, we keep coming together at all the, the conferences and stuff. And this was great. And I hope you're feeling better, which is why we had to postpone um, last last week. Was it last week? No, it was like three weeks. I was sick for three weeks. Oh, that's right. That's right. And then yeah. we have the conference and Thanksgiving. Right. And stuff. But I hope everybody's Thanksgiving was wonderful. Um, so here's the story of this this project. Um, we were at Sagamore. I think I've told you guys about Sagamore um, Summer Institute, which is like a, a sleepaway summer art camp for art educators and people in the arts. And because we knew each other, I told Pat she had to go and she did. And life changing, as I tell everybody, it's phenomenal, phenomenal. Um, <laughs> and so it while we're there, um, 
the participants are are welcome to sell their wares in a gallery. Like if you make stuff, you can put it in the gallery and people can buy stuff from you. So Pat made this a uh, lovely little weaving thing on a piece of driftwood and the colors just called to me and it had beads and it was just me. And so I grabbed it and I paid for it. And then I found out someone else already bought it and I was heartbroken. Um, but I thought, what a wonderful little thing. It never occurred to me to create a weaving and leave it on the thing that you weave it on. So that was a new idea for me. And so I asked Pat if she would do this workshop um, for us. And then I was going to steal it and do it in my class with my kids, um, which I have not done yet. And so here we are. Um, and for that fabulous introduction now, I am going to turn it over to Pat, who is a wonderful weaving friend. Take it away. Hello. So <laughs> I'm, I, uh, so anyway, so I've been teaching here at the Ursuline School. It's in New Rochelle. I've been here 18 years. Um, and yes, we met at NAEA and then, um, Steph said, oh, we have this New York NICATA group. And I was like, oh, that's cool. And then I went to Sagamore, you know, I saw her again, and then went to Sagamore, which is absolutely life changing. I'm there's just someone had said that to me. I was like, OK, but it absolutely was. Um, so anyway, so to get started, uh, inspiration wise, um, I'm just going to uh, show you a few things. So originally what inspired me was that I had uh, my students doing um, string art. So they were doing string art with the nails. You know, we put a little hook on the back of it. Um, so there were a couple of different things and they really got into it. And I was surprised that this group got into it. They worked really hard and there was a, everybody was into hearts, but I thought this one was especially lovely because it, it, it took some thought. Um, and then the rest of them all went home, so I can't show those. So that was one thing. So there, there, that was string art that, you know, considered, I guess you consider it a type of weaving, but it stayed on the board. Can I ask a question? Can I ask sure. you a question? Uh -huh. When you do string art like that, mm -hmm. do you basically just tell them go crazy and hook the colors around the nails and make sure you cover it evenly all the way around? Or is there a specific method that you well there are them. there are specific methods and there are i did not go into that like i showed them um when we first did it i wish i had it hanging here but um we did it on um foam core and uh -huh. we did it geometrically so we did um what did i do uh parabolas right so they had to follow a pattern right. and then they put parabolas together so they did all of that before they got to the wood and then with the wood i was like do what you want. So some people okay. did a geometric thing. Um, some people really, really covered so you can't see the wood. Um, and then some people, sorry, I'm going to have to turn my lights back on. They go off and, uh, so I'm in the dark. And then some people covered less. Let me okay. go do the motion sensor thing. Let me write that. <laughs> School. School. Okay. Sorry, I'm back. I can't so, yeah. even imagine still being in my building at this hour. I would just yeah. Sometimes I'm here like yeah. The, the the fall for us is an absolute nightmare. We're here till like I'm here till nine, ten, eleven o'clock at night for various reasons. Oh my God. Um, anyway, so this one I loved because it was out of the ordinary. Like and she really had to work hard here. So, so why those, didn't she take it home? It's beautiful. Because she was a senior. You know how seniors like they're like oh yeah yeah, and then they forget and then they don't come back. So I kept those. Mm -hmm. Um, so anyway, Pat, so I start Pat, Pat, show it again for a longer oh, moment. Sure, sure. All right, so this is the cloud with the raindrops. I love that. Colors, oh, but they're they're pretty. pastel colors. Fair. So, and then there there were two hearts. This is one on gray with blue, uh, purple, and then this one's all black and white. Did they paint your base the, first? Oh yeah, they painted the base first, and basically what they did was they had a template right? It was paper. And they marked it the way, and I'll show you how we marked it. They marked it all the way around. They had the template taped to the board uh -huh. and they hammered through the template and then they pulled the paper off. Right. So the, all the nails were there. So they didn't have to, um, there was no guessing okay. because this is hard enough to do then. This took a while, right? So, um, and then, so another thing that was inspirational to me was my um, middle schoolers. We did 
ceramic looms, right? So we did those. Wow. Um, yeah, oh. they were really good. Those are so, gorgeous. Yeah, they came out really well. So, and it's again, it's a loom that is part of the weaving, which I really, really loved. So, and then uh, I told you I collect uh, driftwood. So then I found this little piece. I just um, pulled this out of my stash. And this is um, a knot, right, from the uh, from a tree. Oh, that's so, so cute. Yeah, and it's flat in the back. So I was like, this is going to be perfect. So I haven't finished yet. I'm going to put another little round of, um, but this is very fine thread. And you can do all those stitches that we, we're going to be doing those weave patterns, but you don't see it as much until you're looking really close. So I can't even, you can't even see the details on that. But so that, so all these inspirations came. Plus, I'm a lunatic about driftwood. I live, I lived near, well, I lived near the, um, the Hudson for 24 years. So I went to the beach and I collected dozens, I mean, hundreds and hundreds of, um, and then this is another little piece. So that was one that I, I sent you guys in a photo where it's all marked up here. So that's another little piece. And then I pulled this out the other day uh, and I started weaving on it because it's really cute. And so this is uh, so this is the way it is. It's just a piece of driftwood. There's a hole through it. And then I just did um, a tiny little weaving. So that's what your mom was maybe talking about doing, like little weaving. So that's and then this one. Yeah, I love this one. It's really tiny. Like it's yes. like the size of my hand. And I work, I like to work tiny too. And then this is a piece that I was in the botanical gardens and they were cutting, the guy was doing um, in the botanical gardens in the Bronx, when the trees die, they get this guy to come in and he carves all kinds of figures and animals. And this is one of the pieces that was carved off the, the wood. So it's like three dimensional. It almost so, looks and, like an arrowhead, like an Indian yeah. arrowhead. Yeah, yeah. So it's really cool. Exactly. So I I we I uh, warped it and I'm gonna do sections right so you can do that. Um, I can never remember which is the weft and which is oh, the warp. I got this great thing right. So the warp <laughs> is vertical right, but weft goes left to right. Weft oh. goes left to right. But I mean it doesn't have to go left to right. It could go right to left, but it rhymes. Yes. That's the yes. only way I could remember it. Okay, weft is left. Got it. Yeah. Warp yeah. Is so warp is up and down. Okay. Yes. So all right. Anyway, so oh, this is another piece that I want to use. Um, this is like it has an indentation, like a hollow there. So I figured I could put nails around. I haven't. It's another piece of uh, driftwood. So I figured I could put nails around that and then just warp, uh, just uh, weave right in the center. And the less the rest of the wood, you could, the natural beauty of it, you could say. It almost so, looks like a bone. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it's really, really smooth on the other, like you just can't see that. It's so, it's so beautiful. Anyway, okay. So um, I just want to let you all know, well, Steph already knows this. I, I'm not a Zoomer. And, I, and when she asked me to do this, I was like, yeah, sure. And then I was like, oh my God, what did I, what did I say yes to? So I'm just letting you know, it's not my um, forte. Anyway, so I'm going to switch cameras because I'm going to show you a little bit. I don't know who's hammered or not. Has everybody hammered uh, into the wood? Oh, really? Oh, okay, cool. I'm, just, uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm hammered from school. <laughs> Me too, and I haven't even left yet. So, all right, here we go. Uh, okay. Ah, okay. So can you all see me? This is not the best camera in the world and it's going to continually focus. It's going to uh, go into focus and out of focus. So this was a board for the hammering, but you guys have already done that. Wow. Pretty amazing. Um, and I'm not sure. I know Roberta um, did a piece that's very closely uh, warped. So she did um, half a uh, quarter inch, wait, sorry, quarter inch um, apart. So this little piece has quarter inch apart. Um, yeah. It's better probably... You can use odd numbers. Odd numbers are really good for the circular ones. You really do need an odd number of nails and warps, but uh, you could do uh, odd or even. For our purposes, probably even's better, but it doesn't really matter. Um, you just have to figure out what works. So um, that's really, who else has a really close piece? Um, so Roberta, you're the only one. Everybody else has the half inch between. Oh, you do too? Okay. Okay. I thought the paper said to do a quarter inch. Yeah, it said a quarter inch or a half inch, whichever. A half so, inch the edge at the top. Yeah, no, it's fine. It's fine. fine. Um, but you also do. I already, I already have. A, I have one that's warped up very, very close, like what you're doing, super close. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to warp that. 
Um, I already tied a knot, so I have a very thin um, crochet uh, string here. It's mercerized cotton. And I get a lot of donations because we have nuns that retire and they do all kinds of like work. We had a master weaver. She was an artist. She has given us so much and she passed uh, recently. But um, so anyway, so I have a lot of this stuff from people, but you can get this in uh, Joanne fabrics or wherever. All right. So hold on, can you walk hold on. Christina says she hasn't put her nails in yet. How far apart? Depending right. on how large your piece is. I'll Pat, I'll let you answer. Correct. So yeah, no, uh, actually hold yours up. Okay. So Here you can do half inch apart. Um, so I have this one that's warped half inch apart. And my nails are really high right here. I used very tall nails and I told uh, Steph before that I tend to work very small and I will use five eighth inch, I use half inch nails. Um, I use very small three quarters of an inch, one inch. Um, but I made these really tall because it's really hard for you guys to see with this camera I found. Um, I can't even really see what I'm doing on this view. Um, so anyway, so I made these half inch across. So now if, uh, can you hold that back up, Steph? Sure. Sorry. Yep. So when we warp the half inch, that's how we're going to be warping it. Um, when we warp the quarter inch, we're going to be warping it more like this here, if you oh. can see. It. So the warp about, looks I, like. Now let me add my pin um so that you could see these side by side there you go yeah okay cool. so these these are really close together these these um nails are half inch a uh, quarter inch and the warps go straight down and then back up and straight down and back up so you end up having you treat a double double string like one warp like one warp seam so you'll use when you're when you're wefting when you're going across and weaving you'll be using um, these two strings. These two warped strings will be one, okay? So you might have 20, 26 across, but you only have really 13. Is that making sense to all of you? Because they're really tight. No. <laughs> okay, so that's okay. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you how to do this, okay? So should I start, oh, should I start with the small weave or should I start, What do you, what's the consensus here? Should I start with this one or should I start with the tight? Anybody have a preference? Want to go wider or or tighter first? Yeah, wider or tighter. Which one should I tighter. do first? Tighter. Wider or tighter? Okay. I vote for tighter. Okay. okay. So what you have to do first is you need to take um your uh, warp thread. I'm going to cut this one off because I put a knot in it, but I'm going to show you what to do. So you're going to take your warp thread. This is a really thin cotton that I'm using. Get into my camera here. So, and I'm gonna make a knot. I can't, you know, some people can do that knot where you like spin it around in your fingers. I am not coordinated that way. So I'm making a knot and I sent the thread through. I send it through twice. So through the loop twice. Can you all see that? Yep. Okay. Just shout if you can't see something. All right, so now I'm, I'm putting it on the first uh, nail and I'm just tightening it. And it's going to move around a little bit, but that's okay. A lot of times what I do when my warp is moving around after I finish a weaving, I take a dot, a dot of tacky glue and I just put it underneath the nail here so that the warp will stay in place. Okay, so now, um, Roberta, you good? Yeah. Okay, good. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come down and around to, let me see if that helps. Oh, that's better. Is that better? Yep. Okay. So I'm going to go down and I'm 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 going to go around the nail towards the direction that we're warping. Does that make sense? So I'm going yep. to go left left to right. So I'm going to go around the nail and then back up to the next one. Okay? And then I'm going to go around the nail again to the left and go over to the and then back down to the next to the next um nail. Did everybody see that? So you're wrapping the nail. Down. You're going around one nail at a time. Is that right? Correct. Wrapping Correct. The nail, yeah. Do that again quick. So I'm going around the nail in the direction that we are warping, which is to the right. So Wait, then I'm going to... You're not Sorry? wrapping... The, you're wrapping around the nail before... Around the nail. Around? How yep, many times going... around? One time around. Watch, watch. One time around. Whoops. And then back up to the top. Or we're at the bottom, and then one time around, and back down to the bottom. I've never seen that before. 
Well, maybe they, nobody does it. I don't know. <laughs> like I said, I kind of made it up as I went. All right. Okay. And then so you're going to continue to go up and down and wrap your wrap your um, warp thread around each. Oops. Wrap your warp thread around each nail. The key to here is you want to keep your tension. Okay. Because if you don't keep your tension and your warp starts sagging, your weaving will be a hot mess. It'll just be saggy and it won't stay on and, and it, it'll just, so you have to, I mean, some people have to work slowly. I do myself. Oh, now I have a big knot in my warp, which I don't really care about. Okay. So now I'm going to wrap around again and then go back up to the top, wrap the nail around again, go back to the bottom and I'm going to continue. Um, is that, is everybody good? Yes. Thumbs up. Yeah. Okay. okay so. Okay, so I'm just going to keep warping here as quick as I can. So I um, want to be able to show you how to weave on this, but I want to also show the larger, the larger one for those of you who have a larger one. This kind of makes the, the warp threads slant over a little bit, doesn't it? Um, not necessarily. It depends on your nails. Also, if your nails are getting wonky, you can tap them back. And like, if they're like, if the tension on your nail is causing your nail to sort of move, then you want to, then you want to tap your nail down into the wood a little bit more. No, that's, that's not what I'm, I'm asking. Um, okay. Show me. Um, when you, when you wrap around the, <clears throat> excuse me, wrap around the nail. Yes. And then you go up again and down again. It kind of makes the thread slant over towards the next nail. Um, yeah, totally I'm not really sure. Okay, but are your nails all lined up top and bottom? Because yeah. right now I don't have a slant. Let's see yours. It's okay if they have, they do have that kind okay, of little on. bit slant, but it's normal. Wait. It's. Can I see the bottom of your, can I see the, can you take your fingers off the bottom? Okay, move your, okay. Let me okay. pin mom so we can see it. Okay. Add pin, okay. All right, so um, are you, are you ca catching each nail vertically? Mm-hmm. Top, bottom, okay. I think it looks okay. I don't see a slant, but I can't tell. It looks fine, mom. I I know what she's saying. I think I'm having the same trouble. So when I when I put it down here, yes, I wrap it. But when I come up, I go to the, if I go to the next one, see how it's at an angle. Yeah. Uh, how far? Oh no, but you're far apart. Where I'm working. Oh yeah, you shouldn't be doing that. So she has um nails that are a quarter inch apart, really really tight. You see that? You see mine? They're really tight. Okay, mm -hmm. so hers are really tight. So yours are further apart. They're more like this. This is half an inch. So you can't wrap like that. That's all, that's why I started with her because um, Roberta's were tighter. Okay, so for those Roberta, of you did your first warp have one string or two strings? My first one, one. They each have one. Hold it up again, Mom. Just a sec. The wider one, Christina, I don't know if you can see. Yes. Mom. Okay, so I'm going to hold it like this so you can see it at the edge. I'm wrapping around two nails and then coming down. Right. So it's um, still, it's kind of like an optical illusion where it kind of looks a little slanty, but it'll work out fine once you add the weft. All right. So yours look pretty straight, Roberta. Keep wrapping those nails. They look, it looks pretty good to me. What about you, Steph? Yeah, it looks fine to me. Yeah. Okay. So when you're, um, I'm sorry, tell me your name again. Um, you were at, yes. Okay. So yeah. So you're going to do the same exact thing that I was just doing. You can either wrap along two nails or wrap each nail and go to the next nail. So I can show that to you right now. So this is the, this is the, the, um, the board that is uh, nailed with half inch spaces. Sorry, I just need to cut some thread. Okay. I hope I have enough here. 
<laughs> I kind of think you can make your own pattern of of warping as long as you hit every nail. As long as it works for you. Yeah. Okay, so I knotted on. So I'm coming down to this. Hold on. All right, so I'm coming down to the bottom and I'm wrapping around and then I'm going to the next nail to the right and wrapping around that one. Okay, can you see that? I wrapped around that nail. So Steph didn't wrap, you don't have to wrap. You can do it the way Steph did it. I just wrap because I find it for me, um, I end up, the, the warp falls off. All right, so I just wrapped around this nail here at the top and I go to the right and I wrapped around again. So you're doing okay. two at a time on the wide ones. Yeah, so I'm wrapping around the nail, going to the next one to the right, and then going back up. So you, it's always going to stay straight. So it's the same exact process, except you're dealing with two nails at a time here. Do you now, this is a little stay, bit more work. Do you stay consistent with the direction of your wrap on each one? I do. Yeah. Yep. So as I was saying, it just like with this warp here, uh, I go to the I'm going to the right because I'm going I'm going in the direction that the nails are. So we have to warp the whole board and we're working from left to right. So I'm wrapping from left from the left, wrap around, and then I go to the next nail and wrap from the left and go around. And then I go up and I do the same thing at the top. I'm wrapping around, bearing to the right, wrapping around, starting at the left, bearing to the right, and then going back down. If you don't wanna do it this way, you can do the way Steph did it. Um, this is just the way I do it. I find it, it holds, uh, holds better for me. And I find that the tension for me stays better so my my warp needs our warps need to be they need to be taut not super tight 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 but taut enough that, that you can feel them bouncing a little bit but that they don't sag i tried a different way let's say can can you see it i think so yeah okay, let it looks me like it. It. let me pin it hold on uh add pin what did you do uh, Okay, so I I came, I'm down at the bottom, I came up, I went around one nail and then crossed to the one next to it and wrapped that. That's what and we're doing on the wider nails. Can you hold it up again? All right, let me just, give me a second. Yeah, you can do it that way. Um, it's just that the, they're so close together, the the closer ones, that I just do it this way. And then when you when you um, weft on this, you treat these two, you'll treat two, uh, the first thread will be the single here, and then the, the next ones will be doubles. So the doubles will be treated as one. So you'll be wefting around the doubles. But I have to show that to you because it doesn't make any sense when we're talking about it. All right, so this is going to be done in a minute. I don't think there's a hard and fast rule for this. It's just there absolutely is not, and um, I think that's what I was worried about when I was talking about like doing this with you guys because I don't have a hard and fast rule. Like I tell my students all the time, there's more than one way to skin a cat. Oh man, I, mine is too short. Um, there's more than one way to skin a cat, um, and I, I, nobody's taught me this. I've just been, you know, figuring it out as I go along. So I just have to tie a little extra to my warp. What you don't want to have to do, you want to leave your, normally I don't cut the um, thread. I usually like use um, the thread, um, the warp thread from a ball of um, thread or from um, a skein. Just... And I think it doesn't have to be white. 
No. Oh, no, it could be whatever you want it to be. I, I'm doing red specifically because yesterday when I was testing out this camera, which I haven't used since COVID times, um, I just found that the, the like you couldn't see anything. I was whatever I was doing, you couldn't see. Yeah. So when you get to that last nail, I'm assuming that it sounds like a lot of you already know what you're doing. So I just wrap around it and I tie a knot. So one of the things I wanted to tell you about were different tools um, and different types of nails. Wow, this one's giving me a hard time. Um, so the nails that I use are wire nails. Um, they're kind of small. You can get them in different um, different lengths. Um, so I tend to use like one inch or, or shorter uh, because you saw that I, I kind of work small. Um, I, I will be working larger now, but I like to work small because I don't know why I like to work small. I just do. Um, but you can, so I use wire nails. So what I have here with the head, these are wire nails. And these here with the, the flat head, these are wire nails. Okay. And these are wire brad. Let me see if I have it. So this, this nail, these nails are wire brads. They do not have a big head on them. They have a very small head on them. Can you see how tight? All right, let me see if I can show you the difference. Can you guys see the difference with that? Yes. Is that what you have? Wire brads? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they don't have it. They don't, they have a tiny head. So I like using those. And like you saw, I use thread a lot. So it works. The, the I put the, I, you know, suggest heads when, especially with the kids for like string art and probably for this type of weaving. I don't have older kids this um, semester. I have um, the younger kids. So I'm not going to be doing this with them. Um, but this holds the thread on better with the heads. But I kind of like the look um, also of the uh, the wire brads without the big head. Okay, so let's, let me finish wiring this one up so that you guys can see what I'm doing. Oh, this one does not want a knot for me. Um, it feels like I, I feel like other people you oh, uh, have has anybody weaved here before yeah. stuff you have right yeah. everybody's weaved. okay good so you basically know the um the basics and that's what I use I really use the basics and I play a lot with the basics so um I'm gonna start weaving with a fatter um yarn well actually with just a plain old red yarn just because I want to show you you can do this thing called twining um, or, but you don't have to. So you can start with the tabby weave. Um, some people put like sheds in there to like uh, raise the thing, but you don't really need that if you have a high, if it's really high. Um, so I usually use, um, you know, my needles go what is down. the tabby weave? Is that the regular up, it's down, up, over, down. under, over, under? It's the plain weave. They call it tabby or plain. Okay. So, um, so I'm, I thread up, I have a, uh, the plastic embroidery needle, right? So they come in different lengths. So this one's a really short one. Then I have this purple one. You can get, I get these on Amazon. I got a whole, I got like 90 of them or something for some ridiculously cheap number. Yep. Um, and then this is a really long one. So this would go really fast. Matter of fact, it might be better to do the long one. So the long one is better, obviously, I guess, um, for your longer board. So this one, this is too long. So I'm gonna use the medium one for this board because it's it's kind of longer than all my small boards, but it's really not that wide. Okay. So what I do is I come in 
And I tie a knot. Other people don't, but I do because, like I said, I I find that um, it works for me. So I'm going to tie a knot at the bent at the end, and I leave a tail because I'll weave that in at the end. But what I do with the tail is. Um, these are little things that I just learned for myself because I get crazy. Uh, I take a piece of tape and I'll tape the tail to the back of the wood just to get it out of my way. I don't know if other people do that, but that's what I do. All right, so there we go. I'm going to start at the left and I'm going to go to the right. And oops. and so I've already, I'm on, it doesn't matter how I start. So I'm going to go under, over, under, over, under, over so on and so forth till I get to the end. You can create that little balloon that I had mentioned to you guys. Um, and, and really that bubble is just so that you are not putting a lot of tension on the selvage, which is the edge. Wait, 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 back up. What balloon? Yeah. What balloon? No, uh, sorry, it's not, a, it's not a, bu a bubble. It's like a curve, you see the curve? So I'm weaving it and leaving a curve. Oh, okay. okay. Yes. So, and that's just because this, each of these sides is a selvage, right? And did you, if you've weaved before, a lot of times the kids, especially, they pull really tight. And so then they get this hourglass figure and we want it to be um, a rectangle or a square or whatever the shape you want it to be, but you don't want it to be an hourglass figure. So let's say, I'm going to go over, under and over and under and over. All right, so I'm going to pull it. Typically, I obviously wouldn't be doing it at this angle. I'm going to change my angle a little bit now because this is awkward. Okay, so now you can take your uh, handy dandy. Where can I find it? My handy dandy. Uh, you can take your needle and you can push the um, the weft up to the nails, or you can use a plastic fork, which I had handy, a plastic fork, which is my little beater, and I'm going to beat, they call it beating, the um, the weft to the top, okay? So did you see that? Can you all see that? Yes? Okay. Yes. So then I'm going to start, I'm going to go back. So I'm going to go over. So you're doing the opposite of what you did before. So the uh, above you, this is under. So I'm going over, under, over, under, over, under, and so on and so forth. Over, under, over, under, over, under, under. Uh, by the way, because these are so spread apart, I don't find that you end up pulling really tight. It's the, the tighter, um, the closer that you have the nails that you tend to pull a little bit tight. Okay. So I can just, I can, you can use your fingers for this, but I'm just showing you with the fork because that's what we do at school. And I'm just making sure my tension is good, but not too tight. Um, something else I like to do is double up the thread. So right now you can see I've doubled up my thread. So it's still in the needle. It has a long tail and it's double. And then that covers more ground. So that'll give you a thicker weave, right? So I'm under here, here I'm under, and then I'm gonna go uh, over, under, over, under, over. There go my lights again, sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How long a piece of yarn did you take to, to weave with? So, I um, don't measure that much, but like what you can do is when you're unraveling the yarn, like you can say, okay, so this is the width of my board. I'm going to go a little higher here. So this is the width of my board, right? So you can take a little extra and then you can, if you want to really measure it, you can, you know, go, say you want to do four or five rows, you can measure it that way. And then, and then you, and then you cut it. Um, I just kind of guessed because you can always add at the end, um, at each end of your warp. So with this tabby weave, I doubled up my thread. Can you, can you see that? I doubled up my um, yarn. 
and I'm I'm pulling it so that it's not twisted. Uh, loads of times I just I let it twist, but right now it's flat. Um, and also with the one of the other weave patterns, it's um, called the basket weave. That you definitely use a double a double thread. Okay, so I kind of covered more ground with that with that um, weaving with the double thread. So that's so only two times. We want to. Sorry. That's two times back and forth with the double thread. You can do as many times as you want. I'm just showing you, so you can go as many times as you want. Right now, I I'm, I can go another time because now I'm going to have to add more thread. My um thread is too short, so I can go one more time. So I'm going to go one more time. Um, if you guys are caught for like, if you don't have needles at school, you can also actually use a safety pin. So like you can take the safety pin, right? And you can thread the thread right through that top hole. If you can see, does everybody see that? You can close your safety pin, uh, thread through here, and you can weave with your safety pin if that's if that's something you do. These are this is a really large safety pin. You could also um, people tape um, tape the thread to like um, wood. Uh, you know those little scratch art tools. This is a really uh, this is a big one. Um, it's a tapered edge, and then it, it looks like a it looks I like, like a dangle with a point, like a spear. Um, and these are like those scratch art things. These are really long, but you can do those scratch art things, and people will like tape the the yarn to the end, and then use that as as a way to to weave. Or a kebab stick. Yeah, that's it. The, yeah, like what do they call those? Um, Stylus. I don't. I can't remember. But yes, exactly. Uh, you can be very, or you, can, you probably use a crochet needle. Right now I'm using a, like a thick paper clip that I just straightened out. Oh, nice. Now, how yeah. are you, what are you, how are you, um, uh, do you leave a hook on it? Yep. Just left a little, hang on, I'll show you if I can get it on here. Just left a little tiny bend on the end. Uh huh. And sometimes yeah. I'll curl that even a little bit more with like a yes. plywood. Yeah. Yeah. Then I just actually tied it on right yes. now. I tape it or whatever for the kids. Or I'll use, yes. um, sometimes I'll use like a half inch strip of mat board and tape yep. it on so that they can weave yep. with that too. So just yep. for the little kids. Yes. Yeah, no, there's so many things you can do. Like you, like Home Depot is like my favorite art store. Like you can find so many little things for so little. You don't need art, quote unquote, you know, formal art supplies. Um. Like I, we were just doing clay today. I was like telling them, okay, you need to score, 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 wet, 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 press, press, press. And they're like, well, what do I, what do I score with? I'm like, well, like, here's a, here's a plastic fork, a uh, plastic uh, fork. Here's a plastic knife, you know? So, so handy. How old are the kids you teach? Sorry, I don't see your name on the board. Like, so I can't, I can't address name. That's all right. Um, I teach K-12, so I teach everybody Whoa. yeah wow where do you teach um <laughs> i actually teach in a tiny little town called florence wisconsin wow i'm not quite sure how i got totally mixed up with the new york art teachers but i did and i'm glad i did so <laughs> i'm staying <laughs> <laughs> wow wisconsin wait can i come see you <laughs> that's like <laughs> like here's a here's a place a destination i know somebody in wisconsin that's so cool okay. This it's is a weird one, but yeah. these guys kind of know this already, but I, I actually, I'm in Michigan right now because I live in Michigan, but work in Wisconsin. So it, okay. I'm just across the border, but. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. But so I'm geographically challenged. So how far away from work are you? 15 minutes. Oh, that's so nice. It's a crazy drive. It's crazy. That's awesome. The cool thing about this club is that we have people all over the country and, um, across the pond as well it was That's so cool yeah it was really neat i mean uh, you know when i started this i kind of took it for granted that everybody's in new york because that's where i'm right. at and then right. just hearing that it, people are from you know california or, or wisconsin or michigan and then i got people from australia who are contacting me i'm like wow right. that's really cool i kind of panicked one of the first ones that we ever did because everybody started talking about something in New York and everybody was nodding and they all were agreeing. And all of a sudden I'm like, I think I'm in the wrong group. 
<laughs> well, I actually didn't realize that because like I teach in New Rochelle and I don't teach at a public school. I teach at a private school. So, um, so like I feel there's sometimes when I feel a little bit, you know, out of, out of sorts, not out of sorts, but like sort of like, like there was this thing. I don't know if you all got this thing, like the NAEA sent this thing that you could be part of this study or something or another, but it was only for public school people. And I sent them, I, they said, if you have any questions. So I said, well, what about, what about people who don't teach in a public school? You know, like if they teach in a, a different type of school, I, I never got a response, but I was so excited because I said to step, well, how can I be part of this? It's, isn't it New York city art teachers association? It's so everybody. it's everybody. That's so cool. We don't discriminate. Right. Sorry? I said we don't discriminate. <laughs> so Roberta, are you um are you also doing the um, the tabby weave or the plain weave right now? Or are you finished warping? Okay, cool. Excellent. Oh, that's nice. That's really thick um yarn. That's yeah. nice. That's cool. All right. So um we can go to uh I have a little plan here. So we did the tabby weave, which is the plain weave. Uh, we could do the twill if anybody wants to do that. So you go under and under under one and over two. So I'm going to change um, colors just for the heck of it. Can you tie that at the that's end? Twill. Twill, yeah. Have, sorry, yeah. I, I, sorry, end. yes, I did. I tied at the end. I knot at the end. A lot of people are like, I, this is what I do. So I knot at the end and then I taped it to the back because I leave a tail because I'll weave the tail back in to the weaving um, at some point. All right. So twill is you're going under one over two, under one over two. So it's it's a pattern. Um, when if it's uneven because it's three, you could just wrap around the last warp if it's not working like in the pattern and then go back to the pattern as you weave across again. OK, wait. So in plain English. Yeah. I, oh, that wasn't. <laughs> well, if 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 you have an even does it work whether you have an even amount or an odd? Yes. Amount? OK. Yes. You just have to wrap around that last warp. So if you get all the way over to the, the end, you wrap around and then you start the pattern over again. All right. So it's on. Your... I'm going to go. I'm going to start. At that. So I'm starting already. I'm starting here. I'm going under. Then I'm over two, under one, over two, under one, over two, under one. Two, but don't you wind up under one. Going under the same one you went under the row before no um so don't ask me the mathematics of it but it does work i often i was like wait i don't think this is going to work when i first started i was like i don't think this is going to work and it ends up working and when it doesn't work i fudge it <laughs> how many nails do you have i have 15 that's an odd number yeah so you have an odd number so you're you're going to have to adjust you're going to have to fudge Okay. So if you had 14, you would, it would, the pattern would work out. Okay. It still will work out. You just have to fudge it. Okay. So when you, you get to the I, end, sorry. The instructions that we got last night, I thought did not mention an odd or an even number of nails. I actually, I actually didn't, which was my mistake. I'm sorry, but um, it, it in the end, it's okay. It all works out. Okay. Whatever it is, it's fine. I just, I'm trying to understand, that's all. So what's the pattern going back the second row? Okay, so it's the same pattern. I'm sorry, I'm just nodding here. Um, it's the same pattern. So um, when I did that, because I have an even number, you have an even number, right, um, Steph? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, no, 13. Okay, so um, so now you're so where what are you? Are you over or under at the end? I'm ending under. Okay, so did I. So I'm I'm going back over and then I'm gonna go. So you have to do the opposite of what's above. So like I'm here and I'm I'm under, so I'm gonna go over and then I'm gonna go under those two. So you're over one, under two again. If it doesn't work for you, you may have to take a stitch, right? And then- It's the and then, reverse but, of the whole first row. Correct. But- well, This is called again, one, this- You may have to take an extra stitch to get back into the, to get back into the pattern because you're, you have an odd number. 
So now, no, that's working. Oh, it is working. Then you're good. I don't know. No, it's over wait, mine's one, not working. Two. Sorry, wait a minute. Hold on. Over one, under two. Over one, under two. What is this pattern called again? It's, it's, uh, this is twill. So it's, um, so I went over. So I'm going to go, sorry. I always get confused with this pattern. Um, I'm sorry. It's over two, then it's, okay. Over two. Oh, this is not working. Oh, I, I have to wrap around again. Okay, so um I'm going, I went around one. Why is this not working for me tonight? Because because I'm demoing. Take a breath, it's okay. Yeah, I know. I always say to my students all the time, I hate to demo. Is oh, I know why. My, I, I made a mistake in my um in my uh weave. I went over three instead of one, two. Okay. Two, one, under one, over two, under one, over two, under one, over two, under one. Thanks, Christine. Christina, have a good night. Thank you. You too. Bye. Oh, where'd she go? She had to leave. She got Thank stuff you. to do. Hi, Renee. You're sitting in the dark there. <laughs> okay. So it's under, over one, under two, over one, under two, two, one, under two. So you're not exactly doing the same exact pattern going back as you're changing it up because you were missing that one. So you, sorry, there's three, there's three things going on here, right? There's three stitches. So you're actually not going to have, you're not matching up. So if you look at this diagram here, so if you look here, you're starting under, you're going over, you're going under, you're going over, you're going under. And then at the very end here, you have to wrap around and then you're going over two and under one. So it's it's not matching up necessarily the pattern. It, it goes oh, so, on it here. Okay, so it's not the exact reverse. I don't think so. Because I don't know why looks, I'm having it problems. It looks all the time. staggered in your illustration. It's, it is, it's staggered, yes. Did, you, did I give you guys this one? Yes, this is the one that I gave you guys. You didn't give so me staggered. anything. What the, did you the, do? This, I, I did, isn't this the homework? This is the homework thing. You didn't send me that? I thought this was attached to the documents I sent you with all these little stitches. I did not see that. Really? Oh, <laughs> did anybody else see it? No, because no. if you had sent it to me, I would have sent it to everybody else. But huh. can you, okay. can you... I'm going to send that to you. Okay. Because I, well, I have all these stitches. I thought you guys already saw this. I don't know why it wasn't, why it didn't attach. Let me see. I could have had a bad day and not paid much attention. Um, let me double check. How long ago did you send that? Was originally? Or I thought I whenever I sent it with the other the thing, it was part of the same document. I'll have to go look back. Foundation for weaving. Oh wait, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. From. All right, let me see. Nothing. Nothing. It's not in there. From. It's not showing up. Hmm. Huh. Hold on. Can't even find the. Your old man.
All right, I gave, oh wait, hold on, that's the wrong one. Sorry, guys. Yeah, sorry. Oh, here it is. Was it attached to your email? Yeah, I, it's all in this document. Can I send it to you again? Yes, please. There's a weaving vocabulary. Okay, I don't know why. All right, let me send it to you again. Okay. Workshop information. I guess I had a brain fart. No. Um, uh, what is it? Mind and spirit. M and D. N spirit. At AOL. Hmm. All right. So M and oh, here it is. Why did it not come up? All right. Um, Okay, so it's supposed to stagger and not look like a basket weave. So if it doesn't stagger, it's actually a basket weave. A basket weave is two over, two under, two over, two over, two under, two over, two under, two. It doesn't matter where you start. Right. So that's the, okay. All right, hold on. I got to figure out which one. Let me see if it's this one. Yeah. Okay, so I will send the packet that Pat is sending me to everyone who I sent the reminder to with the homework a couple of days ago, okay? Okay. All right, so I apologize. I'm a horrible assistant. What? Don't be silly. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. You're fabulous. We're all fabulous. Thank you. I'm gonna lend you the button that I bought in the in the shop before we left Apex. Oh, about my brain not functioning. Yeah. Oh, what, what did it say? Sometimes I can't think straight. <laughs> yep. Or 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 diagonally or sideways or you know. Yeah. All right. You can you can send it to me after the class and. Okay. I'll cool. just monitor it. I don't want to take up our time. Trying to figure out where, where the Zoom went. There it is. Okay. There yeah, I'll go. send it to you because I already have it attached to an email. All right. All right. Thanks. I'm really sorry that you guys don't have that. I just kind of assumed you did. All right. So I'm going to go back. Going um, over two, under one, over two, under one. This is not good for me. Wait a So over two, under one, over two, under one. So it should stagger. You yes, should it's true. Over whatever you did before. Correct. All right. Under one, two, under one, over two. <clears throat> Okay, yes. So we're staggering. Under one, under two, under one, under two, under one. Under one, under two, under one, over two. two. It'll make a lot more sense when you get to see the um the little uh, diagrams I sent. This one's making my brain hurt right now. Yeah. Um, we could stop and go to the basket weave, which is actually, uh, the basket weave is super easy because it's over two, under two. When you have an odd number, that comes that becomes a problem, but you just you would just adjust that either end mm -hmm. until you get back into the pattern, right? I just made up my own stitch. Well, Roberta, honest to God, I do that all the time. I'm like, oh, I think I'll combine this one with that one. This looks good. 
Yeah. <laughs> but the problem is, is that I can never really repeat it. Well. Is everybody else okay? Okay, good. Yeah, Great. We will be. I think the problem I'm having right now is um, the yarn I'm using is too thin also for my wide space. Yes, yeah. That's, um, that's why I doubled up my red. Yeah. I'm going to change my yarn. Are you going to be using um, flat leather strips? Uh, I'm not sure now. You know, you can use them um, and, and you can pull them through with like, I remember I said the safety pin. You could probably use that. Oh, they'll fit the through the eye that I have of the needle. Oh, they will? Oh, they're, so they're narrow? Um, they're narrow. Yep. Cool. I went to a weaving workshop at the Cooper Hewitt. Um, a few weeks ago, they had um, a whole exhibition and they had all these they had the hand weavers loom association of new york city oh wow and um, yeah and um that, i can't remember the artist that they were she was a fashion designer and she was a weaver and she she was like she you know did crazy things and she was weaving with like plastics and like see-through like plastic ribbon and it was really cool i have to remember her name but i got to try out the looms right and they're they're desktop looms, uh -huh. but they, it was so complicated that I was like, yeah, I think I'm going to go back to the wood. But it was, <laughs> it was, <laughs> it was fun to try, but I was like, this is way intense. Yeah. They look beautiful. The, the, yes. the ones with the treadles and, you know, the, the, all these different moving parts and I'm like, yeah, but that's too much for my brain to handle. Yeah. Yeah. And my daughter weaved, that was her specialty at Cortland, uh -huh. SUNY Cortland. And um, I got, remember I said that nun passed away and she gave, they gave me her loom. It, it was very complicated. And yeah. I had it for years and like, they were like, maybe you could teach the students. I'm like, are you kidding? This is intense. Like, I don't know how to do this. And um, I said to my daughter, do you want to use it? She's like, oh, no, no, that's way too, like, it, it was, it was really old and really beautiful. So I have all of these shots and all these like um, tools and everything. And they're beautiful because they're beautiful pieces of wood, but uh -huh. I don't really have anything to use them for unless I go really big on the weaving. You should so. you donate it to, uh, to, I don't know, weaving society or something. I know I was thinking that, but they're so beautiful. I almost feel like I want to display them. Ah, okay. The wood is beautiful, and the and the um the shapes are beautiful. So I don't know. I'll, at some point, I'll figure it out. So the most confusing part about this is that you at the end you have to wrap around that one warp and then go back to the pattern. Hmm. I'm doing the basket weave. I gave up on that other one right now. Now, here's a question. You had yeah. beads, you have beads in yours. Do you yes. add the beads as you go or do you go back and put them in after the fact? Uh both. So, um in this little one here that I did this tiny miniature one, I added it in as I was weaving. Okay. So I would just, I would attach it to the weft thread and I tried to put it, like I tried to put them 
so that they would be me maybe between the warp threads, right? right. Um, mm -hmm. On the one that you saw, the green one, that one I sewed them in because I thought about them afterwards. Right. Um, this one, I so I, I did get this board ready to show you that um, because my thread was so thick, um, I just wanted to show you guys that you could add beads. So let me just move this over. This is uh, a quarter inch um, warped, okay? So it's all like, it's all weaved here. Um, and this thread does not match. Uh, and I did that on purpose to show you that you can do this. So I already put one bead in, so it's sitting there and it's popping down and thing. So what I do is I pull this tight over here and then I weave it in. And again, because I'm, I would normally use a thread that would match, are you following me? Right, yeah. because I want to hide it, but I didn't. I didn't have the thread that matched this purple, so I said, "Well, let me just show them how do I do this." So if you, I hold this firmly in place, and I go under the warp thread that's sort of just pass it down a little bit. You're out of camera. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Okay. So here's the bead. Uh huh. I'm pushing it firmly over. If you can see, and there's a warp thread right here. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to see. Can you see it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. So I'm going to pass my thread under so it can be kind of tight in this case. Let me see. So I need to get around that warp thread coming up. It's happening. Oh, wow, I did it. Okay, and that's going to, that holds it in place. Right. See it? So it's yeah. not going to keep shifting over. And yeah. then I can add more beads, right? So I have, you know, I have all these different beads. Um, You can have uh, I have lots of beads that I, I wanted to show you guys. So um, these are nice because they're uh, they're pony beads. So for the kids, these are really nice. Um, I tend to, these are plastic. These beads here that I just show you, they're plastic. Um, if I'm doing something like the one I would do to sell, I use glass beads. Now, okay. I don't know, can you go get very big beads? I just have, oh my God, I can't get this thing open. Um, I just have a lot of beads. I have, well, we're all art teachers and we're all artists. So um, I, I have collections of beads. So you could use these wooden ones. These are all pony beads. These are plastic. Um, I don't think I would sell with a plastic bead um, just because I think they look nicer with glass beads, the weavings, you know? And if someone's going to pay like $200 or whatever, not that anybody's ever paid me that much because, you know, I'm broke, but... If they're going to buy something like that, I feel like the glass is more worthwhile. Yeah. But I mean, you know, to be quite honest, these plastic beads here don't bother me. What's bothering me is that my thread doesn't match, but that's okay. This is for workshop purposes. I'm going to go back in there and I'll get a matching thread. By the way, this board is not pink. This board that I have, I put construction paper on there because I you couldn't see with the lighting for this workshop. So when it was like this, you couldn't see the warp. You couldn't see the thread. It was too bright. So I, I'm going to take the, I'm going to take this off when I'm done. So just letting you know, because it might be helpful to know that you could do that. Huh. And then like, I don't normally paint my boards, but I painted this one again because I, you couldn't see it. Uh, you couldn't see any of the details of anything I was doing when the board was um, its natural color. All these tips and tricks. So I, I really originally started working on the wood, like I told you, because I love, I'm obsessed with driftwood and I have so much of it. And I was like, I need to do something with this wood because I would tend to be home and I'd be like caressing the wood. And I'm like, nobody gets to see this, but I want to hang it on the wall or something. Right. So like, all right, let's leave on it. I love that. I'm very tactile also, so I totally get it. And my kids think I'm crazy at school. And I, I told them, I don't care. You'll Someday you'll understand, maybe. It's all right. Do they get into, um, do they like, just like, I mean, it sounds like they they get you. Yeah. Even though they think you're crazy. Yes. Even though I, I, I they say, Miss Abby, you're so crazy. I said, that's okay. I wear my crazy freak flag very loudly and proudly. I don't care. Mm -hmm. Life is more fun. All right, my lights went out again. <laughs> Life is more fun when you're a little 
little on the weird side anyway. Yeah, I, did you see the Meryl Street thing um, that I put up on Facebook? And it said your weirdness and your individuality was is what makes you great or something. And, yes. and I was like, well, thank goodness for that. You know, yes, I love that for the acknowledgement. All right, let me see what else I want to do. Do what you guys. All right, so the basket we we did the twill, we did the the thing. Okay, so something that's a lot of fun to do. And it gives your, it fills your, um, it, it, it will fill your uh, your weaving uh, with texture and with lumpiness and all kinds of stuff is a sumac. Um, and unfortunately, I have it here and you guys don't. And I'm upset. Like, well, you will see it. So um, I'm going to demo it. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. to. I love doing sumac. It's just cool um is that, so is that the loopy loop one yes so it's a little loopy so can you see this it's a little lumpy it kind of looks like cotton balls or something little pom-pom so yeah. it's a lot of fun to do and it looks really pretty and so there's the sumac and there's also if you explore further there's this the egyptian knot so it's kind of like sumac but they go in opposite directions um if i if i had i don't think i had that in this packet i didn't Wait, so wait a minute, hold on. I did, I did. Oh yeah. So here's, here, here's, these are some of the things. So this is sumac, this is the sumac right here. And then, so the loops go upright basically. And then the Egyptian, they face each other. Can you see the difference? Yes. Right? Yeah. Mm. yeah. So when I, you know, when you get, when I, I'll, I'll email this packet to you because this really helps like, you know, to have the diagrams. Is that? Is that a book that you bought or? No, I just put it together. I This is just the book. This is what I, uh, well, what I thought you got. Um, right. And I just, I stapled it all together. Typically I, 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 um, I do both sides, but I didn't print it both sides this time. Um, but what I mean, but, your original, is that from a book or you just put it together from your own collection of sample stuff oh yeah no so uh i i have i don't even have a lot of we i don't even know where my weaving books are i i literally have picked up everything um as i go and also those are like uh, diagrams that i got um on 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 the internet oh, and then okay. i just i i i um every time i see a diagram that makes sense to me i hate diagrams um like like i teach fashion and, and every time i have to look at one of the manuals for the sewing machine i'm like oh god these diagrams are terrible but so i try to pick the ones that really are clear because okay. the kids don't like diagrams my kids don't anyway if they have to spend more than um i don't know 18 18 seconds trying to understand something they don't want to be bothered yeah i found that too is that like universal? Um, I'm sorry, who is it? I only see Laura's name, but tell me your name again, Miss, Miss Wisconsin and- uh, Kelly, <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> I don't see anyone's names on there. What, Kelly? Kelly. Yeah. Oh, Ellie. So Ellie, are the kids like Kelly. that? Kelly, Kelly, Kelly. K-E-L-L-Y? K-E-L-L-Y. Uh, yes. <laughs> okay, gotcha, sorry. So Kelly, are the kids um like like where you teach, are, are they similar? Yeah, like I they want a, instant gratification. I think that's everywhere for sure. I have a yeah. weird group right now this term that I can really push hard and they actually will like work for days. Like we've been wow. working on a colored pencil piece right now and it's like like silent in my room. I let them listen to their own music on their um, headphones. Uh -huh. but it is like silent in my room right now and they are all so focused and it's just the weirdest thing ever to the point where I feel like there's times I'm like, I don't even know what to do with myself right now. Cause I don't like, I'm hovering a little bit. Right. Right. Cause you feel like so, you need to be doing something. Yeah. But I definitely like feel that compared to, I've been teaching 21 years now and I feel like compared to when I started, the kids definitely are. Yeah. They, they need that quicker. Fix. They don't want to research as much. They don't want to kind of practice something. They want to jump right into everything. And yeah. Right. Do yours also feel like the first time they do it, they're done? Like there's no revising, there's no next, yeah. trip, there's no, oh my yeah. God, it makes me crazy. It makes me crazy. Sometimes I feel like that's partially our like grading system and stuff though, too, that we, you know, I, I honestly, I still wish that 
there's part of me that wishes I could teach on a pass fail only because then I feel like kids would be more willing to like take, take a risks. chance. Yeah. Yeah. And I find that, like, yeah, I find the same thing. They don't want to take risks. So is mm -hmm. that going to mean I, I don't get a good grade? Right. Okay. Right. That, I, that, I think that's part of it. So I've kind of worked that into some rubrics too. Like the experimentation has worked into rubrics so that yes. they have to almost do a little experimenting in order to get that grade that they want. Yes. That's but, such a good idea. I, I, that's an excellent idea. Put it in the rubric because mm -hmm. like today I have a, they're doing Tim Burton style self portraits with holiday elements. So like we did, they did uh, my first quarter eighth graders did them for uh, like Halloween. And now the second quarter girls are doing it for Christmas or whatever holiday. Uh, well, it is a Catholic school, but there are other, um, other uh, religious backgrounds that um, kids who come to school. So I, I'd let them choose what they want to put. But like one of the girls was like, yeah, well, I said, you know, I think you need some more values, you know, because we're supposed to have light, medium and dark values. And she's like, well, I like it like this. Yeah. So I walked away and I got snarky and I was like, okay, well, I'm glad you like it like that. I guess that's the grade you're going to get. And she goes, well, what do you mean? I go, well, there's a rubric and you're not following it. So like, whatever you want to hand me is fine, but that's the, you know, the less, you know, you commit, the less the committed the grade is. I found during, um, during COVID an amazing chart that said your effort equals your grade. And it gave an example of a simple drawing of an apple from right. failing grade all the way to a hundred and oh yes i think someone told me about that how each version you know equals the, the more effort you put in and the higher you know the more creativity or the more shading or the more patterning whatever it is um that's the grade and i've had it up in my room and of course nobody looks at anything that you hang up in your room no um and they don't read anything either when you literally hand it to them uh, no nope. but, but it's been up in the room since day one. And I said, you know, you, you give me crap, you're going to get crap. It's right there on the sign. So right, this is not up for debate. We're not going to haggle over a grade. This is what you have to do if you want to get this grade. So, you know, I, I'm done arguing with the kids. It's like, you, you don't, you don't, you don't get it. <laughs> and I just, oh, it's not worth it. Right. All right, so this is the start of the sumac. If you guys want to just watch, um, and again, you'll you'll be able to see it so much more clearly on the diagram. So I wrapped around the end um, warp there, and I'm going to go under this this next thread. I'm going to turn my I'm going to turn because I'm going in that direction. It's easier for me to do it this way. So I wrapped under, and I'm going to. So we're making basically a loop around each warp. Okay, so I wrapped under. And then I'm going to go under and then I'm going to go up to the next warp. All right. So when I when you see when it pulls through, you'll see what I mean. So it's kind of like if you can see that it kind of looks like the diagram. Can you see this? Yep, It's a loop de loop. A loop de loop. Exactly. But it has to be going so that your your loop, is, your thread is on the outside of that loop. So it's going down towards the bottom of the board. OK. So then you just, and you keep looping over, but you go to the next warp. And, and it's, I actually love doing this one. It, it's so relaxing and therapeutic and it just looks so much fun. Especially if you have really thick um, um, yarn for the, the fact that our, our warps are really far apart. So you go under and around. Yep. Go under and around and then to the next warp, under the next warp. Around. Okay. Over, under, and around to the next warp. I like this one. It is so much fun. I just love it. And I love it. I did it in that little miniature one. A lot of these here in here, these are all sumac. And in here, they're all sumac. Okay. Yeah, the chunkier your yarn, the poofier your... Yeah, but you could also, remember, you can also double up your yarn. So instead of having one strand in your needle, you have the two, the double. And that, that, that also uh, thickens it up a little bit. 
and and again, you're you're beating your. Uh, I hate using that word, but that's what they call it. You're beating your um, stitches at the end of your warp with your fork, and you're pushing so that your your um, weaving is nice and firm up against the nails. Typically, like if you have a loom and you're taking it off the loom, you wouldn't push it way up there because you would have a fringe or something. You know what's funny? I've done weaving in my class before with the cardboard looms, right? Yes. And mm -hmm. the kids come to me and they've gone all the way down from the top to the bottom and there's no right. room. And I'm like, hmm, well, you didn't push your yarn up, bless you. So right. I take it and I push every, I push their yarn all the way up and scratch right. it. And now they have like three quarters of space left. <laughs> on yes. their and I'm yeah. Like, yeah. Oh my God, you, you just threw. I'm like, no, now you have way more room to do more lines. Yeah. Right. They're like, oh my God, look what you did. No, look what you did. You didn't follow instructions. It looks great but now you have more room to do more work. And they think that they're going to finish a weaving in like one class session, which is hilarious. Right. Absolutely hilarious. Yeah, I, I feel like um, sometimes, I just feel like over the years I've watched the, um, the effort level go down a lot. The yeah. effort level goes down, the, um, the commitment, commitment. Or any, yeah, it's just like, I'm not really sure where it's coming from, except that, um, you know, everyone's always talking about, I just think it's the instant gratification. Uh, if there's not, if there's no result in 30 seconds or less, then they get that really either frustrated or bored. Yep. Okay. So at the end of one row of sumac. Yes. You wrap your, you. you wrap, I wrap around. Two wait, times? Yes. I wrap around that last warp yeah. and then I go to the next. Okay, you wrap around and then you go to the next. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Um, just giving you guys a heads up, it is 828. Okay. Um, if you, I don't know, Pat, if you like want to go home and have a drink. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely going to, um, I have some good links. Um, I'll, I'll send that in the, um, I'll put that maybe I'll, uh, I, I found these two, uh, YouTube people, Spruce and Linen and Fibers and Design, and they had some good, um, videos that I thought were helpful. Okay. So I can send that to you too. But do you see this wasn't as hard as you thought it would be? Um, okay. <laughs> oh, come on. It was fun. You had fun. Yeah, I'm so I'm no offense to the other 20 people who didn't come, but I'm kind of glad they didn't. I like this group and everybody has a smile on their face and uh, <laughs> and I'm jealous about the, the, I don't know your name, but you get to pick your sinks. Our sinks are so god awful, even though we have a lot of them. It's like, who designed this classroom? Oh, our sinks above our sinks, they have outlets. Oh, like, that's safe. Part, I was like, we're all like, why would anyone put an outlet above? There's six outlets, four, one, two, three, four out, five outlets over our sinks like why would you do that maybe they think we're gonna cook and have appliances and stuff i, I have, have a toaster oven in my mind too you what i have outlets by mine too when they were redesigning one of my buildings when i worked in um another district they were redesigning the art room and i luckily got a hold of the plans prior to them starting because uh -huh. i was never consulted on the plans but when i got a hold of them they were putting um, flat files for paper under one of my sinks. Oh God! Oh God what a stupid idea! <laughs> why don't they? Because why would they consult the actual professional who's going to use the space on how it should be designed best? Exactly. And like when I said it to them, they were just like, just totally like awestruck that they even thought about it. But they were like, "I can't believe you caught that." I'm like, "Well, <laughs> duh. Yes, this is what I do all the time." Right. So they they did this really big 
renovation. It was like an $8 million renovation at our school. And they, they didn't get a single classroom. So, th- and we need classrooms, right? But they did, they did like a administration suite and they did the, the front lobby. And the biggest thing is the iHub because it's all about steam now, because none of us actually teach design because it's all about design now, but the art department never teaches design. I don't think any of you do either. Right. Ever. So when, when they were, lo- the, the architects were like looking, they asked me to come in and look at the to help they asked a few of us to come in and look at the plans for the iHub and I was like all right well where are your outlets and they're like uh what do you mean I'm like you need outlets everywhere like everywhere and then um they're like oh and I'm like and they're like well we're gonna put the sink in the closet and I'm like why would you put a sink in the closet I said you can't get kids to clean when the sinks are like uh, they're tripping over the sinks and now you're gonna hide them in a closet so like one person can and like, what, what was the purpose of that? Then they were like, because I um, they asked me because I I weld, so I had a garage studio, and um, they they didn't have any basic stuff. I said, what about your lighting? You need lighting everywhere, 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 everywhere. And then they had the glow. Have you ever heard of the Glowforge? Yes. Yes. So they they put the they put the Glowforge, and I said, well, what are you going to be doing about um? venting oh no this doesn't need to vent we're going to vent it out into like the hallway i'm like no no it needs to be vented so do you know they had to redo part of the the room because they never vented any of this stuff oh. and and we were like why are you putting the glow forge there on the interior where the hallway is why would you put it on the outside wall so you can vent to the outside oh no 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 I'm like all right whatever so now yeah. eight million dollars later they're fixing this is this is why there's no money because they don't consult the right people who know what they're doing prior to and then they have to go around and clean up their own messes. Oops. Crazy. That was you ever use Raya knots in your weaving? Uh yes, but like I haven't done it like here on these because I work really right. small. Have you, you used them in the middle? Yeah, I I use them sometimes I'll use them too just like if I have a kid that is burning out a little bit right I'll show them that because then they I don't know for whatever reason they don't see that as working as hard as weaving is that right <laughs> so it and it I think it's sometimes harder because you have such little pieces that you're working with and you're I but, know but they like it and I think they like the fuzziness of it so it's just such a different yeah. texture that they they'll get into that for a little bit and then they go back in and um, and so I was, also gonna tell you, yeah. I was also going to tell you guys, there was a, um, exhibit a couple of years ago, I think now at the Milwaukee museum of art too. And I don't know if you ever heard of this, um, weaver, but Christy Matson is her name and she mm. had a really nice exhibit there too. And so, um, I use her a lot of times as an example as a, of a weaver at this point. Yeah. Can you tell me Matson M-A-S-T-S-O-N or is it um, D? M-A-T-S-O-N. M A T Christy. Christy, yep. Uh, it's C H R I S T Y, and then M A T S O N. All right, I'm gonna look her up. Yeah, if you look up her name, and especially if you look it up with like um, Milwaukee Art Museum, it'll bring up a lot of her stuff. It's really nice. Oh, that's nice. Um, something I really I'm I'm leaning towards also is like because I do a lot of 3D, um, myself. And I really want to do 3D um, weaving, like, and I've seen it, but it's really hard to find where like people are weaving on three-dimensional forms and it looks really cool. That's why I started with that wood, the piece from the botanical gardens. Mm -hmm. So, but I haven't, I haven't gotten to it yet. You know, I'm just a little, I guess we're all a little bit busy with school. Just a little. Yeah. I'm ready for the year to be over. <laughs> I know, right? Is that sad? No, it, I was ready in, in September for the year to be over. Like, I didn't want to start. I, I love my job. I really do. But things have changed so much here that it's not as... The joy is slowly being sucked right out of out of it, you know? Yes. Not, know. Not, not my job, but just the environment. The daily minutia. Yeah. 
Like the other night, did you guys do parent teacher conferences yet? Um, actually, I was at um, the NYSADA conference. The oh, you lucky devil. It was the first conference in 21 years that I missed. And I didn't miss it at all. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Do you guys want to go like another 10 minutes or is everybody yeah. at a stopping point? We should all do like a gallery and hold up what we've done so far. I'm going to remove the pin and I'm going to, yeah, let's everybody hold up our stuff. This is what I have so far. Oh, wow. Is that Robert? Who's that at the bottom? That so, is Sandra. Amazing. I'm gonna I'm gonna change Gorgeous. my wait. Who? What's your name again? Sandra. Oh, that's... The bottom middle. Sandra bottom. bottom left. I only. Hey. Hey. My... Oh, Kelly, you look so. You got the ruler in there. Oh, oh and you did a diagonal. Look at you. Yeah. That is so cool. Mine's gonna be a triptych when it gets finished. So I've got my first panel. Same uh -huh. size on the opposite side, and then I'll have nice. a half panel in the middle. I love That's it. That's awesome. I That's so bump. awesome. I did the, the little bumps. I forgot the name of the stitch. Oh, the 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 sumac. Sumac the is the loop de loop, right? Yeah, the little pink. Yeah. Oh, um, Kelly, I love. Can I see yours again, please? I love it. So you're you're really advanced because you're at the point where you're doing blocks. Is that yeah, I like you're, on a, you're on a piece of wood there? Yeah. yeah, it's it's actually it's a really flat piece of driftwood. Driftwood. Oh, I love that. Look at yeah, you. I love it too. Are your are your nails at the top? Are they on the same angle as the edge of the wood? No, oh, okay. they're not. I I did go straight across so that I could see a little bit more of the wood with the finished uh -huh. edge. Uh huh. So, uh huh. Yeah, and then this part I left too. I went straight across here so I could yeah, see so you little. can see the edge. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. I love that. And That's what is your stitch? What is your weave pattern there? Is that did you just do the like? Um... I'm just doing a straight tabby right now. Oh, okay. Um, cool. I tabbied over probably about. Mm, I think I have about eight rows, and then mm -hmm. after, and then you started eight. I started skipping. So, yes. Yep. I'm nice. Very big. Oh wow, mom! Oh, wow. That's beautiful. Is that that's the one you started here? No. <laughs> I was looking for weaving supplies and I found this with some yarn in a box. <laughs> oh, wow. I did, I did it last year. <laughs> that's like a total sampler. I love it. I love it too. Really cool. And I've done that's nice. like the, the school cardboard backing. Ah, <laughs> we all have I, those. <laughs> yeah. When I retired, I brought some stuff home. And that's one wow. of the things. Very that's awesome. Cool. Pat, when you were showing like the um the clay ones, I've done those too. Uh -huh. But I've also done with my like ceramics kids where they've thrown a pot and then you, oh. you just cut that little window and punch holes and then they can weave it inside of the pot. That's oh, awesome. Oh, yeah. Oh my that's gosh. Cool. And then I was just gonna share share too when I am having kids weave, and I don't know if you can see this right now. I'll just try to yeah. like when I'm woven all the way across, I'll just pretend and I'm having them come back around. Yes. What I have them do, especially from a young age. Oh my gosh, this is awful to try to hold this. Hang on. <laughs> um, what I have them do as they're pulling their string across is I have them keep uh -huh. their finger like finger. right here before right. their last weft. And as they pull, they can pull really fast then. And then it hits their finger and not the weft string. And gotcha. then they can lightly right. pull yeah. it across so they don't right. pull in. Yeah. So they don't get that hourglass. Yeah, because they want to pull. That's my hardest pull, pull. challenge. I can, I always end up like a little in, and it drives me mad. And I don't know how to not do that. Yeah, so I do. If you put your finger right before that last weft, and then you pull, 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 it's gonna hit your finger, and, and then not pull it. on that string, and then you can gently pull it over and push down. Yes, I'll yeah. try that. Good. Try that. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. We Thank all you. so much from each other. And Pat, you're awesome. Thank you for uh, thank persisting you. and 
showing up and <laughs> through and being amazing. Oh, I'm going to take you home with me and I'm going to open my closet door in the morning and you're going to say, Pat, you are amazing. And I'll be like, thank you. Even the way I look right now. <laughs> yes, I should leave you a voicemail. And anytime you need some encouragement, just play the message, play the message. Oh, saw, uh, that was so great. Thank that. you. I really enjoyed meeting all of you. So great. Well, feel free fun. to join us any other time because this is a great group of gals. Every yeah. now and then we have a guy, but mostly it's just a, gr a great group of gals. Oh, that's um, nice. And that's fine because we run the world, so it's okay. <laughs> behind every, uh, behind all the closed doors, we're running the world. We are. We're we're telling them how it's done. That's it. That's it. Why are there no more men art teachers? Why have there ever been that many? Well, though? No, there are not more men art teachers. Maybe they're all on the university level. I had a, mm. an art teacher in high school. His name was Norman and Gorin. And I've been yeah. sitting and wondering if he's related to the judge that's doing the Trump trials, whose name is Angorin. Huh. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Norman. I'm not following any of that, Angorin. I'll have to look it up. Did, did you didn't hear me or what? No, no, I heard you. I'm just saying I'm not following any of the Trump trials. Like I'm not oh, following no. any of it. Any of all that, like the politics, it makes me, it kind of drags me down. I know, yeah. but I, I happened to hear his name and it uh -huh. took several years because I never heard that name before until I had that, had that art teacher. Yeah. That was high school. And he's the one who suggested that I should go to art school. Huh. Nice. <laughs> it's your inspiration. Yeah. A hundred years ago. <laughs> All right, girls. I'm gonna call all it right. right. Um, I hope to see you all I'm again. Sure when our next session will be, I I don't have one planned until January. Um, right. I'm going to well, I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see. Maybe I'll find a volunteer or somebody that I can stalk and convince to to share something with us. Have if you I ever done Himaly? Who? Have you ever done Himaly? What is Himaly? Um, it's a Finnish tradition of making. So here, hang on. Let's see if I can <laughs> up and show you. Let's see if I can get one. I've here. heard of it. Is it the um? Is it like um um um? I think like we it, did it. It I sort did of it. looks like a mobile in a way. Yeah. Mobile. Sort of. Oh, oh yeah. Do you do those with the straw, the paper straw? Yeah, I did it with my kids, but we we didn't do that. But we did like um, but shapes, different like forms, and yeah. they hung them. Yes, that's why I knew that name because that's what I told them about. That's so cool. You did that? Uh, no, I didn't do this one. I have I've done some, but I haven't done this one in particular. I just looked one up just to show you guys what it looked like. But um, traditionally, they were made with rye straw in like mm -hmm. Finland, Sweden. Um, but now I do them like I do them with just paper straws with the kids. Would you so like get to color and so you maybe do that sometime? Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah, traditionally they're hung around um, like Christmas time, but yeah. I mean we could do it whenever. Well, but I well, just have to play with my camera and make sure I can get a camera working here or working at school. But I will figure it out for sure. That'd be fun. Um, we did that, and I got that. I saw there was a Dick Blick. Um, at one of those conferences, there was a lesson plan for it. And that kind of gave me the idea. And then okay. you do with wire, you do with wire and you make all these different shapes and you can attach them. So that I, that looks like fun. Yeah, I don't do them with wire. It's just with string um, and the straws. Nice. And then, um, I Sometimes I'll toss out like yarn and like pom-poms and the kids can kind of add to them too and kind of yeah. you know, let a little less traditional and they can kind of add little whatnots to it. Oh, it sounds like fun. Yeah. Would you so be just, available December 14th? 14th? That should be fine. Okay. Let me double check and get back to you, but I'm going to say it should be good. Maybe that would be awesome. Yeah. December 14th. We're on Facebook, aren't we, Kelly? Or we're not? Um, I don't know. <laughs> um, I have your email, though. I will email you. Okay. 
and then we could talk about the details. Okay. December 14th. Kelly, Ellis, you are a lifesaver. Awesome. Okay. I, um, I already put it in my calendar. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. All right. Thank you, Kelly. And if uh, we don't talk before then, well, like we wouldn't talk, but have a um, an easy time before the crazy holidays really start happening. And uh, we'll see you next time. Okay. Right. Have a great weekend. Right. Bye, everybody. Right. Thank you. Thank you so Bye. much, Pat. You. You're awesome. You. You're oh, awesome. You. <laughs> that was wonderful. Bye. Bye. Bye.